celebration throughout the show tonight. But first, we have something else to bring you that the left, the mainstream media, is barely touching. And by the way, one of the biggest stories of our lifetime, of course, the Inspector General's report, totally vindicating the president's decision not only to fire James Comey, but the IG corroborating everything we have told you for months on this show that the rest of the media never talked about. A two-tier justice system, a rampant deep state bias, an attempt to literally create a soft coup in America and prop up one candidate and destroy the other candidate. Uh, and you tell me Watergate's a big deal? And so much more. The mainstream media, well, they couldn't care less. Look at the headline from Newsbusters today. On Monday, CBS News totally ignored the IG Horowitz's first testimony since the release of the IG report. And after two days of damning testimony from the IG, Michael Horowitz, and so many new revelations surrounding Peter Strzok, yesterday, your friends at ABC so-called news, Georgie Stephanopoulos' place, NBC News, they avoided covering Strzok at all. The guy at the center of the biggest corruption scandal in American history. Now, of course, we know one of the most central figures, of course, was the anti-Trump FBI agent Peter Strzok, and I doubt he's going to testify. Let's see if he chooses the right to remain silent. Now, we showed you a detailed timeline last night revealing what his rampant bias shared between Strzok and his FBI lawyer girlfriend, Lisa Page, including clear instances where Peter Strzok, the head of both investigations, was vowing to work against Strzok and protected Hillary from known felonies. Now, remember, Strzok was also the lead agent in her case. That is the server investigation. And then immediately thereafter, tap for the lead role in the FBI's Trump-Russia investigation, rendering, by the way, illegitimate Mueller's investigation. He cleared Hillary, who committed literally felonies one after another. He vowed to protect, by the way. And he worked against Donald Trump and tried to destroy him. And that was all in the context of a presidential election. That sounds like a big deal to me in a lot of different ways. Oh, and by the way, as he's trying to protect Hillary Clinton, uh, isn't it interesting that it didn't work out? Anyway, as we scroll forward, remember, Strzok was the lead agent in Hillary's server investigation, then tapped for the lead here. Okay, nobody in the media is telling you any of this. He clears one person. Think about this. In the context of a presidential election, in the context of a presidential election, you know, targeting Donald Trump, who eventually becomes president. All right, now as we move on, he will be called to testify before Congress. And by the way, the House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte is reportedly ready to issue a subpoena. My prediction, he ain't going to talk. Just a guess. He will join us in a few minutes of the upcoming showdown. And of course, we also know Strzok is just the tip of the FBI's high-level corruption. In fact, the IG referred five agents for investigation over rampant anti-Trump actions. And Strzok's pending testimony could blow the lid off this deep state house of cards, which we, this is all beginning to collapse. People are going to go to jail over this. In other words, we're now created a deep state firing squad. And we're learning another wrinkle in the deep state scandal. It surrounds Christopher Steele. Guess what? Christopher Steele, the foreign spy who the Clinton campaign paid for to produce phony Russian lies against Trump. Well, that guy, infamously known as the dossier creator, filled with those Russian lies. Well, Steele, by the way, you know, he was welcomed at Obama State Department just days before the 2016 election, where he allegedly briefed officials. So what did John Kerry know? What did Obama know? When did they know it? Because you know what? What did they do with this phony information? And by the way, when is the media going to start talking about all of this? And more importantly, what is the next shoe to drop in all of this? We have so much more to come in what is the biggest political scandal in your lifetime and you at the forefront of seeing it. All right, former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer joins us, the author of Why We Fight, Recovering America's Will to Win, Sebastian Gorka, and senior fellow with the London Center for Policy Research, Monica Crowley. Sean Spicer, let's first go to the absolute venom of people on the left and the lack of coverage of the biggest story in their lifetime and the lack of telling the American people the truth about Obama's separation policies. Well, I, I, I thought your monologue was spot on. I mean, the, the, it's unbelievable what the left says and does and gets zero outrage and zero coverage. And I think most of it is because, as you kind of pointed out in the monologue, the media agrees with it. And when they agree with it, they ignore it. And they almost, you know, in some cases, I think they mistakenly retweet it or like it because they forget that people actually can see some of those tweets. 
but it's amazing to me the lack of outrage. I mean, these people, you pointed out the, the, the Peter Fonda tweet. There's so many more where they use disparaging language, make threats, and yet there's zero coverage. Yet anything that's done on the right by the president or any of his supporters is called out and asked for an immediate apology and, and has to be denounced. The, the way in which they view the same kind of outrage is unbelievable. There's zero when it comes to people on the left. And it's, you know, everyone needs to be denounced and we have to have boycotts and censor the people on the right whenever they do anything. And I'm not excusing any of the behavior on the right. Don't get me wrong. I think when people do something right, wrong, I'm sorry. they step over the line, they should be called out. But it is unbelievable what happens on the left, the way they get away with it. You think about this, Monica. Okay, talking about raping a woman, talking about kidnapping the, the first son, 12 years old, and putting him in a cage with pedophiles. And then there was even an assassination, CBS reported, uh, a real threat against the president today. Is the rhetoric connected to it by these, these people on the left? We are so far beyond normal politics, Sean, and the reason is because Donald Trump, from the moment he came down that escalator in June 2015, represented a serious existential threat to the ruling class on all sides, and that includes the mainstream media. And from that moment on to this very day, their mission has been to destroy him, everybody around him, discredit his presidency, destroy his voters, smear them as well, because he must not be allowed to succeed. And that's why you see this kind of over-the-top extreme reaction. Their first response to anything this president says or does is always to reach for the most extreme rhetoric and right, actions. Right there, and Monica. that's not going to end anytime soon. Monica stays with us. Sean Spicer stays with us. Dr. Gork, I promise you're up first when we get back. Also an exclusive interview with Bob Goodlatte. What is he going to do with Peter Strzok and Jim Jordan? Stay with us. Busy news night. All right, as we continue, Sean Spicer, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, Monica Crowley, Dr. Gorka, I did not mean to talk so long in my opening monologue, although I kind of really did. Um, Is this what you do to the Singapore crew, Sean, really? <laughs> the, I, I know you traveled 24 hours in the air both ways for our audience. I love you. Don't worry. Um, the hypocrisy. Can we have some honesty about this immigration issue? So suddenly, the left, Peter Fonda included, care about minorities and care about children? What about the 60 million children that have died in the womb since Roe v. Wade? What about the money they spend on Planned Parenthood? 19 million African Americans killed in the womb. They, that's how they care about minorities. But let's forget about pregnant women and embryos, if they want to call them embryos. Uh, when did we hear the left talk about Nisa or Kyla, the 15-year-old beautiful girls that were murdered in Long Island by gang members born abroad. I didn't hear them protest about needing to protect American children from gang members. The hypocrisy, the rank hypocrisy tells you one thing, Sean, they are desperate. They have no message for November. The economy, the rally was incredible. The things that the president rallied off about the economy, North Korea, raising the pay of our military, they are desperate. And this is you a know, very good sign of how desperate they are. I, I don't have a lot of time tonight because we did go long in the opening segment. But, Sean, you know this media. You know why fake news CNN didn't want to cover this and they only dipped in occasionally and why MSNBC, same thing? I'll tell you why. Because they would be exposed in the president's speech and rally for being the liars that they are. Well, look, I, I think you, you pointed out in the monologue, the bottom line is I think the president is getting results, whether it's the economy or in foreign policy, um, and I think the, the media has made it very personal. They don't like him. They don't. They never like conservatives. We knew that, but this is very personal to them. They don't like him, and they're not going to do anything they can to talk about the results that he's getting for the American people. I'm glad he took the action today. The images of watching children um, was was horrible, and it, it was heart wrenching. Um, I'm glad he took that action today to make it happen. Uh, I hope Congress follows up on the president's actions. But it's what the media is doing and what the left is getting away with is something that's that's just right. something I, I, I'm speechless at it. All right, we're going to leave it there. Uh, by the way, Monica, somebody said the nicest thing about you today. I, I'll tell you about it later. Thank you for being okay. with us, all of you. <laughs> Dr. Gorka, our Singapore friend.